Welcome to Now on Android, your ongoing guide to what's new and notable in the world of Android development. In this edition, we'll cover the first developer preview of Android 16, our spotlight week on passkeys, stability and performance improvements to the Android emulator, and more. Android 16 Developer Preview 1 is available now to test with your apps ahead of the planned release in Q2 2025. 16 introduces major and minor API releases to allow us to drive faster innovation with more frequent API releases. We're planning both a major and minor API release in 2025, and only the Q2 major release will include app-impacting behavior changes. The minor release introduces new features without these changes, so you can focus your app testing on major releases. The week of November 18th was a spotlight week on passkeys. These are safer and easier alternatives to passwords, allowing users to sign into apps and websites with a biometric sensor, pin, or pattern. We kicked off Monday with a quick video on the passkey basics and updated UX guidelines for credential manager and passkeys, including an in-depth server-side implementation guide, plus an introduction to the Identity Hub, a comprehensive resource for passkeys, passwords, sign in with Google authorization, and more. Then Tuesday was all about the developers. This included a guide to help you migrate from legacy APIs to Credential Manager, technical details on FIDO2 attestation format changes, and a troubleshooting guide for common Credential Manager errors. Wednesday was focused on new capabilities in Credential Manager. This included showing credential manager results as autofill suggestions, single tap sign-in, signal API for Chrome desktop, and a restore credentials feature. Thursday featured an Ask Android session and case studies with Tokyo and X covering their successful passkey deployments. And finally, Friday capped the week off with learning pathways on Android and Chrome and a new composed sample app for credential manager and Android. Based on your feedback, the Android Studio team took a step back from large feature work on the Android emulator for six months to focus on Project Quartz, an initiative aimed at reducing crashes, speeding up startup time, closing out bugs, and setting up better ways to detect and prevent issues in the future. We have seen 30% fewer reported crashes in the latest stable version of Android Studio and reduced our open issues by 43.5%, with 17% of these actively fixed during Quartz. A ton of content came out of Google Playtime Milan. David Crary Mandel talks about monetization with insights about how to make the most from users' time and wallet share trends. Mingu Kim covers the myths and fallacies of device optimization to help make the right investments for your game or app. Hong Dani shares insights about expanding your apps to new territories and navigation market expansion, key considerations. Tammy Tall covers subscription fatigue, from myths to facts to opportunities to help you improve the performance of your subscription app and minimize churn. Kevin Flynn deconstructs successful Google Play game launches. Austin Shoemaker covers optimizing your app's revenue flexible monetization tools to improve your user conversion and reduce churn. And finally, Kenny McCubbin shares insight on improving your ads with measuring the impact of misleading ads. Thomas Azen highlights GazeLink, the winner of the best Android app for our Gemini API developer competition. GazeLink demonstrates how the Gemini API can be used to provide a communication system for individuals with ALS who develop severe motor and verbal disabilities, enabling them to type sentences using only their eyes. GazeLink uses Google's Gemini 1.5 Flash model to predict a user's intended sentence based on a few keywords in the context of the conversation. Aditya Pathak writes about how Google Play can help you navigate the ever-changing landscape of commerce and payments, especially when it comes to global tax and regulatory compliance. In the past two years, we've seen a significant increase in the number of new regulations impacting Google Play developers. Aditya highlights how partnering with Google Play enables you to access a global marketplace serving over 190 countries 
with a powerful ecosystem built on security and trust. Mindy Brooks covers a few excellent tips and tricks to help you build high quality, engaging and age appropriate apps. App developers play a vital role in shaping how people of all ages interact with technology. This is why Mindy covers how Google can help you determine a user's age with digital IDs, shield young users from inappropriate content, develop teacher-approved apps and games, and stay up to date with Google Play's families' policies. Now at Google Play, we're committed to providing a safe and secure environment for your business to thrive. This is why Dom Elliott put together this article on how the Play Integrity API helps protect your business from revenue loss and enhances user safety. You'll be ready to use this API to detect suspicious activity and decide how to respond to abuse such as fraud, bots, cheating, or data theft. And finally, Mark and Mahai share an update on Chrome's new reduced user agent string. Beginning in Android 16, the default user agent string in Android WebView will match the shortened string now seen in Chrome on the desktop and Android platforms. In episode 221 of Android Developers Backstage, Chet, Rahman, and Tor chat with Shai Barak about how the Android platform team studies performance and understands system health. They cover topics such as measuring performance, deciding trade-offs, and some of their favorite tools such as Profeto, Compiler Explorer, and Android Studio's Memory Profiler. Listen to it in either podcast or YouTube formats. In Android build time, Christopher Cartland, Mayuri Kinvasara Kabaya, and Levi Schmidt cover how to include Ultra HDR images in your Android apps. Rebecca Frank shared a great series of videos on how to unleash your artistic side with code. First, she covers clipping and masking in Jetpack Compose, which naturally leads into a great overview of how to turn your UI into an artistic masterpiece in Graphics Layers, Jetpack Compose tips. And if you're looking for a real quick tip, check out Josie Rolf's short on Anchor Draggable. Are you wondering how tablet and stylus support can improve your Android app? Check out this video of how Flip a Clip saw a 54% increase in tablet users and improved their revenue by building large screen and stylus support on Android. Check out this article for more details. We Are Play celebrates people behind the apps and games you know and love on Google Play. Fujio from Tokyo, Japan created Perika, an app that helps clean up public spaces by combating litter. Check out the article linked below. Now over in Indonesia, the husband and wife team of Mesti and Gary created an app that gives parents across Indonesia the tools and knowledge they need to care for their children. For more info on this, check out the link below. The first alpha release of EXIF Interface 1.4.0 was released, bringing support for reading XMP data from HIF and AVIF images, and also EXIF from XVIF as well. Media 3 1.5.0 reached stable with many improvements, including faster image encoding and motion photos and transformers, simplified the setup for default preload manager and EXO player, has a new IAMF decoder, a Kotlin listener extension, easier player customization delegation, and so much more. And check out Christina Semakova's article to find out more all about these new APIs and bug fixes. Finally, WebKit had its first 1.13 alpha release, bringing an experimental async startup API and mechanism to allow developers to trigger URL prefetching. Now then, that's it for this week with the first developer preview of Android 16, a spotlight on passkeys, great improvements to Android emulator stability, and so much more. Check back soon for your next update from the Android developer universe.